Hello everyone, Scruffy Golden here. This is the first video in a series of videos describing how to install a no compromise power plant in your travel vehicle. This will be going into my new hiker trailer, which is an off-road trailer, but the concepts can be applied to installing a power plant in any kind of vehicle, including an RV, camper, or van. Now in a previous video, we took a standard hiker trailer fridge box and we modified it so that it could accept the fridge freezer on the other side and the power plant that's going at it on this side. In this video, we'll kick things off by showing you how to build a battery holder that anybody can build, takes very few parts, takes very little space, and can handle anything that this vehicle can throw at it. Now before we get started, I have to mention I am not sponsored by anyone for anything at this time. Everything you see in this video, I bought with my own money, just as you would. Having said that, I am an unashamed fanboy of several products in this video, including Hiker Trailer and Battleborn Batteries. But my enthusiasm is born of experience and usage, not from sponsorship. So with that said, let's get into it. I will be installing two Battleborn 100 amp hour lithium ion GC2 batteries. The GC2 batteries have a slightly different shape than the standard drop-in car battery from Battleborn. Function and feature-wise, these batteries are exactly the same as the car battery version, but where the car battery versions are long and rectangular, these batteries are more square or cubic. It doesn't matter though, the process I'm about to show you will work for any kind or size of battery that you want to install, or any number of them. When I say this is a super easy build, I am not kidding. All you need to build this battery holder are some one inch aluminum angle bar, a pair of cam buckle straps, and some number 10 flathead sheet metal screws. Believe it or not, that is all it takes. The one inch aluminum angle bar can be found either online or at your local big box home improvement store. To determine how much of it you will need, lay out your batteries side by side or end to end in the same way you plan to lay them out in your vehicle. And buy the angle bar in increments that best fit that configuration. The angle bar will go underneath the batteries around the edges. So simply measure each side of the combined batteries and buy the angle bar in increments that best fit that configuration. With regards to the cam buckles, there are all kinds of cam buckle straps out there, but I went with a heavy duty version that has a 2200 pound brake strength. I bought the shortest version they have, which is eight feet and cut it to size, but these straps go as long as 16 feet if you're strapping down multiple batteries for say an RV. In addition to being strong, these straps have a flap near the buckle that has several uses and even comes with some small Velcro straps that we will put to good use in this build. I will put a link to these in the description below in case you want to use them also. I went with number 10 flathead screws that will be recessed into the bars so that the batteries will sit flat. With the materials determined, let's start with cutting the bars to size. I have found that the most accurate way to build this holder is to build it right into place. I started by deciding how the cam buckle straps should lay across the batteries. Let's start with the edge of the batteries that will actually hold the straps, and we'll call those the ends. So, I cut two end pieces that are the same width as the batteries. I made them the same width so that there was room for a screw at each end in addition to the two screws that will go through the straps. I also cut two side pieces that were each the same length, but note that you don't have to build a completely closed square or rectangle to hold these batteries. In fact, it will take much longer to build and won't give you any extra protection to do so, so I don't think it's worth the effort. Having said that, you want the side pieces to span most of the length of the batteries, so I cut the sidebars one and a half inches or 3.0 centimeters short at each end for a total of three inches or 7.6 centimeters less or shorter than the total length of the batteries. To cut the aluminum angle bar, I used my miter saw, but you can use almost any kind of wood cutting saw to do this. Aluminum is a soft metal, so it's okay to use a regular wood blade, especially if you go slowly. Note that when you do this, sharp aluminum slivers will fly off the bar. So using safety glasses is a must. Furthermore, the slivers are also quite hot. They cool off very quickly, but they can sting or even give you a low grade burn when they land on your skin. So you may want to wear gloves and or dress accordingly. With the pieces cut to size, it's time to drill the screw holes. To determine where the screw holes will go, I started with the side bars since they would be the easiest. I decided to place a screw three quarters of an inch or about two centimeters from each end and one in the middle. The side pieces just keep the batteries from sliding. They don't actually support the weight of the batteries, so three screws are plenty for this length of bar. 
The end bars will be supporting the straps, so a couple of additional screws are needed on each piece. I kept the screws at each end at the same 3 quarters inch or 2 centimeters from the end. Then I placed a battery on one of the bars and eyeballed the strap placement and basically determined there would be screws at two and a quarter inches and six and a quarter inches from the strap end of the bar. This is equivalent to 5.7 centimeters and 15.8 centimeters from the strap end of the bar. When the batteries are in place, I want them to lay flat on the angle bar. To do that, I need to cut a countersink into the bar so that the screw head is flush with the bar surface. For this, I used a conventional countersink bit and a common handheld drill. I did have to muscle it a bit, but it's still pretty easy and doesn't take very long. Once all of the holes are drilled and countersunk, you are ready to install the holder. Now when it comes to building the holder, let the environment determine where to start. For my build, I knew that I wanted the batteries to go up against the fridge slide, and I also needed them to be two inches or five centimeters from the wall for some cable management. So with this in mind, I started by putting one of the end pieces up against the fridge slide and properly spaced from the wall. I laid the end piece down over the straps while making sure that the buckles had room to move and that they faced the correct way. The correct way to thread these cam buckles is from the bottom up. So I laid out the straps with the bottom of the cam buckles facing up in this scenario. With everything where I wanted it, I pre-drilled the holes and simply screwed down the bar. Notice that the straps are under the bar and that I screwed through the straps so that they stay fixed in place no matter what happens. With the first end piece screwed down, I put both batteries in place and snugged them up tight to each other. When I had them squared up where I wanted them, I put the other end piece into place under the battery. I carefully lifted the battery out without moving the angle bar, pre-drilled the holes into the plywood floorboard, and loosely inserted the end screws. By not screwing them down tight at this point, I was able to thread the straps under the bar where I could square them up with their holes and place a screw through them like I did before. Then I tightened up all the screws on that bar. By the way, if you found this video useful or helpful so far, I would appreciate it if you whack the like button so that this video can spread to more people who would find it useful. I'd appreciate it very much. Thank you. So with the end pieces completed, I repeated the process with the sidebars. It gets harder and harder to see in this tight space, but you have the idea. I dry fitted each bar into the batteries, carefully removed the batteries without moving the bar, pre-drilled the holes, and then screwed down the bar. I was working so closely to this installation that I didn't notice the sidebars were asymmetric until reviewing the video footage. The bars and screws are hidden from under the batteries, so I confess I was a little loosey-goosey with this. I had simply eyeballed where the center screw would go, and then I lined up those center screws with the crack where the two batteries meet. Since I wasn't precise with where I placed the center screw, and was even less precise about where I lined up the screw with the batteries, an asymmetric result is what I deserved, and what I got. It doesn't change the quality of the build, and of course it's not visible in any way, but it was a little sloppier than I usually am. It's not worth undoing everything and straightening out at this point, so hopefully you and my OCD will be able to forgive me. With the angle bar screwed down, all that's left is to place the batteries and strap them down. After putting the batteries in place, I wrapped the straps up and over the batteries. Then I went around to the other side of the fridge box where I could easily access the buckles. The straps go up through the bottom of the buckles and simply pull tight. If you look closely, you'll notice the cam buckles I have here come with an extra piece of strapping that is stitched to the main strap near the buckle, a flap if you will. This flap can be used as a handle for securing the buckle somewhere, and I originally considered putting the screws through this flap before I decided that everything sat better if I went through the main strap instead. I also needed the buckles to sit higher than the edge of the fridge slide, and the flaps weren't long enough to accomplish that. The flaps do serve a purpose, however. If I pull the flaps up under the buckle when I tighten the straps, then the flap creates a barrier between the buckle and the battery housing. This should keep the battery housing from getting gouged by the buckles during off-road jostling. There was another unexpected benefit of using this particular brand of straps that I made full use of. The straps were tightly rolled and held together with a small Velcro strip. After securing the straps tightly over the batteries and cutting to size, I used these Velcro strips to secure the straps into place for a look that is as tight and as clean as it is secure. These babies are not going anywhere, even if we turn this trailer upside down, which I hope I never do. Now that we are able to secure the batteries, it's time to wire them up. In the next video, I'll show you why I went with Battleborn's GC2 battery rather than their conventional drop-in battery. And in the video after that, I'll show you how to wire these batteries together in detail. Both videos will have some information you may not have seen before, so hopefully I'll see you there. Until then, live without compromise, and I'll see you out there.